My name is May Siebel. It is March 8, 2020, and I'm interviewing Ari Morensenbaum for the One Story at a Time Project, Viva Shalom, celebrating Latin American Jews in Dallas. Good morning, Ari. Good morning. So happy you are with us today. Um, were you born here, or were you born in Bolivia? I was born in Bolivia. Okay. Santa Cruz. In Santa Cruz, okay. And uh, how old were you when your family moved here? Um, pretty much, I moved here for college. I was about 18 years old. Okay. And um, what influenced you to come to college here in the States? Well, uh, my uh, grandfather's sister uh, had moved here after World War II. So we have family here in Dallas. And had a few scholarships in a couple other places, and my dad said, uh, well, I had a presidential scholar here at SMU as well, so they said, hey, this is a good school, you know, we have family there, so um, why don't you go to Dallas? So that's how we decided to come and stay. Tell me about your life growing up in Bolivia. So uh, growing up, uh, there weren't very many Jews. Uh, there were about 500 families. Uh, I think uh, at one point um, and uh, it was a pretty close community uh, we got together for Shabbat uh, we had a we didn't even have a synagogue we had a, we had a house that we would go to somebody had donated their house uh, for services and, um, later on I think we had a like a, a Jewish community center that uh, uh, we call it uh, Israelita, so like Israeli community uh, and so that was uh, that was kind of nice because we would go there and you know do different activities and learn about Judaism, and uh, uh, we would uh, also have uh, interaction with other uh, states in Bolivia, uh, like the capital. And we had you know we had some friends over there with the Jews in the community over there, um, and uh, so we would, we would do some camps and uh, you know like Jewish camps over there. So it was it was nice to uh, to uh, interact with, with other people. Were there like youth groups? Yeah, we had some. We had different groups. Uh, uh, they were the uh, I think it was below eight, and then you had like from eight to twelve, and then there was another group from like twelve to like six, seventeen. So that were, those were kind of the main groups uh, that you would belong to, and um, you had different activities depending on you know it was Purim. I mean, we would all dress up and. Uh, it was it was fun. I mean, just uh, or we we would have like a like a little show, a little play that we would do, um, and uh, you know we would get together for uh, different people's houses uh, uh, for like uh, Pesach and uh, different festivities, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur. Um, we had a, a rabbi that would come from Argentina to do the, the high holidays, and that was pretty much uh, pretty much it. Um, the uh, um, we didn't really have a chazan, per se, uh, for every Shabbat, but we would have them every now and then. And so we would have to learn how to do everything, so we basically had to uh, uh, officiate and you know, have the service, and we would do everything ourselves, so uh, we would do all the, all the singing and chanting, and, uh, so it was kind of neat. Um, and then uh, pretty much for my, for my bar mitzvah, I learned Hebrew, and um, uh, I was about, I guess, years old when I started and uh, we were lucky because there was an Israeli couple that was there uh, working at the, in the oil field and so um, they were doing some other uh, agricultural stuff with Bolivia or some kind of a exchange and I think they still have that same program uh, where they come and they uh, have engineers that come from Israel and you know, do, uh, do some kind of uh, projects with them and, uh, in development of uh, seeds and different different things agriculture maybe and so uh, we were good friends with them, and he said, "Hey, can you teach us Hebrew?" So they, you know, they, they would be teaching us Hebrew, and you know, after school, and uh, one of the uh, El Dad, and uh, he was uh, one of my best buddies, and so he would come over to the house all the time, and so um, we had some some uh, interaction there, you know, and, and learned some of the uh, things that you know they would do, you know, um, as far as uh, uh, you know, and just different games or. That uh, that uh, they had in Israel at that time. Gaga, I never heard of Gaga before, so. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So you had a full Jewish life, even though there weren't, there wasn't a synagogue, I, and you didn't have a full-time rabbi. It yes, like you had a wonderful it was, Jewish life. It was it was very good. Yes, we uh, we had also kind of some influence. My uh, my uh, grandfather's uh, uh, his sister, uh, he married Saul Frangler. They would came they came to form our bar mitzvah at that time, uh, and uh, he was a pretty big influence as well. I think. Uh, when I came to SMU, um, I had a lot of interaction with him, and you know, every Shabbat he would take me to Shar Tefillah, and we would uh, we would dive in there, and we would you know, uh, he would teach me everything that he could, um, and uh, that was that was very nice. But but um, I think we were always uh, pulled to tradition, and and uh, we were uh, always wondering, you know, where we came from. I think that that was important to us, or at least to to many many of the uh, Jewish community. It was a pretty close knit group, so. Um, yeah. How did your family end up in Bolivia? Going back, you know, going back. Um, well, my grandfather. The story goes. This is from. This is actually from Saul. Uh, from what I heard from him, uh, my grandfather was an electrician, and uh, he uh, he uh, at first he didn't want to go into the army, so uh, he said, "Well, uh, if I have to go, then I'll have to go." So. I guess he, he ended up uh, going into the army, and uh, um, uh, there were. Uh, uh, Where was he? He was time? he was in Poland. In Poland, Poland. yeah, okay. in Poland, uh, mm -hmm. and so uh, he was in a little town called Loschitz, uh, and uh, apparently, uh, at that time, he I guess saw things that were coming, and uh, he was good friends with somebody in the. Uh, I think an ambassador there from Bolivia or somebody in that area, and uh, he said he had to pay like uh, the price of like maybe a house to get a passport. And uh, he, he, you know, since he was an electrician, he had money, and uh, he, you know, not a lot of money, I guess, but he'd been saving. So uh, I guess all of his savings went to that, and he just said, "Hey, I'm, I'm getting out of here," and that's how he, I guess, he knew somebody, um, and I think he even had like a. You know, some kind of uh, permit or something that would let him in the country, uh, and so um, I think he landed in Brazil first, and then you know met some people there, but uh, but he was he was very resourceful, uh, I think very uh, very smart, um, uh, amazing person, very calm, and uh, he he didn't speak English, he didn't speak he barely spoke Spanish, and his Spanish was like. You know, like so funny. To, yeah, when when I would hear him speak, it's like you know, why does he speak so funny? You know, I tell my dad, and his Spanish was like you know, uh, so that's what I, I remember because I think I was 13, 14, and he passed away when I was fourteen, fifteen. Was um, he married? He was. Oh, he, he, he was married. Yeah. So your grandmother came yes, with him. Yes. Uh, he, no, he was no, he wasn't married. Oh. He married. He married when uh, he married when he was I think in route to Bolivia. Um, Somewhere in either he met met her there in, in, in Bolivia. I'm not too sure about the story, but I know her family is like maybe from uh, um, from Brazil uh, and maybe Portugal. I'm not too sure. We haven't really uh, I haven't really investigated that part of the family yet, uh, but uh, we don't know too much about her. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean he. He was uh, he he would trade uh, at first. I think he was in the trade business, and so he would do anything to trade. And then he started the textile business, and uh, he was very successful with that. Um, then he uh, started doing like materials for construction and stuff. And so, um, but he would I remember he would he would go to Brazil or Argentina, and uh, his Yiddish was like that. That's that's it. That's what he spoke. He spoke super great Yiddish, and he spoke Hebrew. Uh, to the point where uh, I was surprised. I mean, my uh, I, I uh, it was my bar mitzvah, and he came over and and um, he was he was uh, asked to read the Torah, and so he said, okay, yeah, I'll go up there. So he went up there. You know, he probably hadn't read the Torah in I don't know twenty years. <laughs> he went up there and just uh, went at it, and I was like, oh my god, you know, and I was next, you know, I was next after him. I was like. I was like, wow, it's pretty good, you know, and uh, I felt I felt really really proud. And then he told us, he said, you you are you are Levy, um, and 
he says, uh, you don't know where you know you don't know where we come from. He said, but um, but we were all rabbis back in the day. There's a there was a big uh, street uh, in in Loschitz that was your grandfather. They call him the Great Nute. They had Nute the Great. So everybody would come for him for questions and um, a, a very scholar family. Uh, so pretty interesting. Was this your father's? This is my father's. Okay. My father's father, yeah. And what about your mother's? My mom's, <coughs> my mom's dad, they came from Yugoslavia, uh, from Croatia. And so I uh, don't know too much about them either. I know they came, I think, maybe during the First World War. Um, and that's how they came to, to Bolivia. And then my mom, on her side, they were, they were Morana Jews. So uh, they were from Spain. Okay. So um, yeah, her last name is Isis Ortiz. So. Every, everything that ends, I think, in IZ, it's it's a uh, it has to it goes back to to that era with the the, uh, the Sephardim Jews over there. Um, so I'm not uh, too sure of that. Uh, also of that lineage, uh, haven't really investigated much there. Um, so pretty uh, pretty interesting. But I know uh, uh, I'd like to go uh, probably to Poland one of these days and. Out there. They found out we have a, my grandfather has, still has a house out there <laughs> that uh, is still under his name and uh, apparently they, uh, you know, he still owns this piece of land. Um, I have also uh, my uncles uh, from Bolivia, they've, uh, through the uh, uh, Polish embassy, they've, they've actually become Polish um, with my grandfather's uh, birth certificate and so they've uh, already there's many of them that are, that are actually Polish, <laughs> and they have a dual citizenship now, and they, uh, they're planning a trip uh, uh, soon, and hopefully we can, we can join them maybe, uh, and we can all go and see. Uh, I've told my dad that uh, one day I want to I go with him. And, you know, when we're there, we're obviously going to uh, also see maybe Croatia. I hear it's, it's beautiful out there too, so uh, it'd be nice. I like to surf, so... Uh, <laughs> I know there's a couple of places in Croatia, to serve, so <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> uh, so you still have family in Bolivia? Yes, yes, we still have a uh, we still have a whole bunch of uncles, aunts, and uncles that are there. Um, pretty much uh, my my dad's side of the family, he had um, five brothers uh, from the first marriage. My dad, my grandfather, married three times. Uh, second marriage, he had a daughter, uh, a sister there, and then. Uh, he's got two uh, younger brothers and younger sister, so there's total uh, uh, nine of them. Yeah. And then on my mom's side, there's there's also I think eight or nine. She's got eight nine, eight brothers and sisters, so she's kind of in like in the middle. Um, but they're all they're all still there. Uh, nobody's uh, actually moved. Um, the only ones that have moved, I have a I have a couple of cousins that are in Argentina. Uh, a couple of cousins in Brazil, uh, and then I have one cousin that lives here in the U.S. Uh, he actually went to medical school with me in Mexico, uh, in Guadalajara, um, and um, he uh, he ended up in uh, New Mexico, and he's he's over there. Uh, he's in the UN. So it sounds like you had a very free life in Bolivia. No. Anti-Semitism. You know, it, to a, to a degree, uh, yes. I think we were we were blessed that we were around uh, educated people. You know, uh, but still, I think in the uh, I was in a French private school first, and then I felt some there. You know, saying stuff is like, oh, he's Jewish, you know, or you know, um, you know, they killed Jesus, you know, <laughs> something like that. So, but I would I would hear stuff like that. We 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 do, they really didn't have any. Uh, You know, Santa Cruz is a very interesting city. It's it's almost like New York. It's a it's a mixture of uh, many different uh, uh, ethnicities. Many different countries came there. I don't know why. I mean, I guess it must be the there was a lot of uh, industry there. You know, people were very friendly, uh, very open, uh, and so I think that helped kind of mold the people that were there to a uh, more of a tolerant society. Um, and uh, just very interesting people that were, I mean, my classmates and, and friends and all, they, you know, they come from different places, Austria, you know, Spain, uh, 
Portugal. I mean, they were just from different places. So um, uh, it was it was just uh, interesting to, to grow up there. And uh, it, uh, the only thing I remember that was uh, anti-Semitic was uh, the, the Jewish Community Center in La Paz, in the capital. They, they had a bomb over there, I think, that, that went off. Uh, and so that was uh, kind of scary at times. I think I heard more uh, uh, anti-Semitism, uh, you know, in uh, probably in Mexico when I was there, where they were kidnapping people, uh, and uh, that was kind of kind of scary. My sister lives in Mexico. She's in, she's in Guadalajara. She she studied to be a dentist there, and then she uh, she stayed there. She loved Mexico. She says, hey, this is where I want to be. This is where I want to raise my family." And uh, she she found uh, this. Uh, they're Mexican uh, Jews. Uh, they are from. They're actually Russian Cuban Jews. So they came from Russia. And then they they established in Cuba and then they they came to Mexico. So um, pretty interesting. Um, uh, also, uh, uh, I got to live in, in Mexico. I was in medical school there for six years, and uh, it was a very nice community um, uh, as well there. And so uh, they would uh, be very inviting and. Um, if you didn't, if you didn't know anybody, you, you know you get like kind of a host family, and, and we we kind of also did the same in Bolivia because we had we had a lot of people that were visiting, or um, <clears throat> and so we we had a you know we had we had a people for Shabbat that would come to our house, and so that was also nice, you know. You, you know, my mom said uh, she's like, oh no, we're inviting them for for Shabbat for you know we're always supposed to invite somebody for Shabbat, and you know, we're also always supposed to have a guest, so. Uh, that's kind of the, 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 the what I grew up with, and, and uh, that mentality of always welcoming people, and, um, and it was just it's just nice to. to right. yeah. So when you came to Dallas, Miss, <coughs> and you was there an understanding that you had, you know, friends with the, uh, the or family with the Primos? Right. Um, did you have any problems settling in here? Or? You know, well, not really. I had. I had just traveled to Israel. I was just I was there for six months. My sister actually stayed there. She was at the Hebrew University for I think two years or a year and a half, two years, something like that. But um, I basically um, had just come come back from Israel. I had been in Europe, and you know, so I was like, hey, you know, this is this is great, and uh, I was having a good time. Uh, in fact, I met a great family here, the uh, the Kasanovs. I don't know if I'm, uh, they are. Um, uh, they're from uh, East Texas, from Tyler, uh, and uh, uh, she, uh, the first day I was at SMU, I was wearing my Hebrew University shirt, you know, I just got back, so uh, I go into my English uh, rhetoric class, and she looks at me, she's like, man, what are you doing here? Uh, this is a Methodist school, and this is your first day in class, and you're wearing your Hebrew shirt. I was like, well, I said, I just picked something, I said, I was just in Israel, and, you know, was that Dorothy sure. Jane? Yeah, yeah. Not, yeah, yeah, Dorothy Jane, yeah. yeah. So DJ was like, oh my God, he's like, you're coming for Shabbat for me on Friday. So I was like, okay, great. <laughs> you know, so she became, she basically became my mom here in, in Dallas when I was here. And my parents were not here yet, obviously. They moved later on, I think four or five years after. Um, I had already, no, probably later, maybe eight years later than, than I had finished uh, college. Um, and so they were my family here, uh, you know, with the Pranglers. And, uh, but they would invite me to, to Shabbat, uh, you know, her, her husband's a cardiologist, so he also had a, he passed away already, uh, Arnold, but he was also a big influence on, on, on me and, uh, um, and becoming a doctor, and, and uh, it was just, just uh, really nice to have that, uh, that support. Uh, and, you know, any holidays, any, any, uh, and, 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 and we would, we, I would go, to, they would go to Temple Emanuel, and so I would go to Temple Emanuel with them, and, so that was a different experience as well. So I kind of um, moved and, and went to different uh, synagogues per se, um, and uh, it was it was nice to uh, nice to have that. They even came to my uh, to my bar mitzvah. My my brother's bar mitzvah, I think, was uh, was and, and they oh my god, they had a blast. They were in Bolivia, <laughs> and uh, it was just so much fun. They they uh, we, I took them to the capital and we we went uh, you know I took them to the the Lake Titicaca, uh, and we toured around there. It was just we had a lot of fun. We uh, we had a we had a big farm, and uh, they went down to the farm with us, and 
it was it was uh, very neat to have them in you know in my uh, in my arena, right. <laughs> in my country. Yeah. That they were experiencing you know different yeah. things, and um, it was just very neat. We, we came so you finished med school mm -hmm. in Mexico, med school. and yep. then you came here for internship. <clears throat> yeah, basically. Um, Around uh, after I finished medical school, um, uh, Bolivia was in a very bad situation uh, politically, and uh, they were, there was a lot of tension going on at that time. And um, uh, my dad had a he had a big empire of you know things that he did. Uh, he was uh, he was a pretty, pretty smart guy too. He kind of continued the lineage with uh, that my grandfather had left him with the uh, materials for construction, so he had a big company. But uh, he had uh, you know trucks that he would rent or that he would you know manage, and he uh, he was in all that. But the construction kind of started uh, having some problems there. The uh, the government was getting involved. My uh, mom's brother, who's a, uh, my uncle, was the prime minister, the defense minister at that time, and so. Uh, Mom's, my mom's side of the family, they're all, they're all uh, uh, lawyers. On my dad's side of the family, they're all either doctors or engineers. So uh, the, uh, th the uh, lawyer side of the family, they were like, you know, this is bad, you know, if, uh, you know the situation is getting, it's getting worse. So some people started to, to move from Bolivia, and, uh, and um, uh, that, was, that was a little bit later on. Um, but uh, my parents decided to move to the States. Uh, my dad um, uh, did some investments and so the economy tanked at that time and uh, he lost a lot of money. Um, so I basically uh, almost uh, couldn't finish medical school. Um, I was kind of trapped there and um, I didn't have any money. Um, and so um, I barely had finished medical school and so I said, well, uh, I'll probably have to go back. And uh, I, uh, I, I had support back home, and I said, well, um, I had, uh, uh, I said, I'm gonna have to go back to the hospital back there and, and uh, do my internship there. I did my internship. I did my, uh, there's a social service year that I have to do, uh, and I also had to do a, uh, uh, my, I started my residency there as well. So I did both of those at the same time. So I did about three years of uh, surgery there, uh, general surgery, and uh, uh, that was the only way that I could uh, support myself because you know staying with family back home and uh, the hospital they, they you know they wouldn't charge me uh, much. I'd have to pay the university, and uh, I had to, I had to raise uh, some money um, helping some of the other doctors there uh, and just working kind of freelancing and just, just helping out there until I had that money to pay the university to be able to finish. Because uh, you still have to pay, even though it was your internship. Uh, like in Bolivia, in, in here in the States, they start paying you. In Bolivia, they pay you very little. And in Mexico, you actually have to pay uh, to, to, to actually finish your, your, your training. Mm -hmm. So um, it was, it's a little bit different than, than here in the States. So that was, that was a rather difficult uh, time. And then uh, my, my parents decided to move uh, to the U.S. So when they were moving here, um, uh, you know, I kind of kind of helped them get settled before I uh, before I moved back. Uh, so I kind of did a bridge or transition. My brother was still going to med uh, going to school. He was uh, he was going to uh, first at community college at. Uh, uh, Richland, mm -hmm. and then he transitioned to uh, UT, UT Dallas. So he still also had to uh, kind of have some adjustments, and you know, um, my parents had to had to go through that uh, whole move. Uh, and, you know, experience. My mom, you know, she she didn't speak English very well. My dad, you know, he kind of he kind of uh, you know was was okay, but um, uh, my mom was, uh, it was it was hard for her. You know, the her whole family there. Sure, it was it was tough. Mm -hmm. So you're practicing here now? Yes. Uh, so I, uh, after I finished my training, um, and uh, I had to kind of do it all, kind of all over again, because uh, you know whatever you do in other countries is not, uh, you know, it's not uh, uh, per se recognized. Uh, so I did another residency, uh, did a residency in family medicine, and uh, did a residency. 
can see also in the, I did a kind of an extra year of uh, OB and uh, obstetrics and I was uh, delivering babies there at the, at the hospital and I was uh, also part of the C-sections um, at the hospital as well since I had some surgical background. Uh, but I was, the, I was one of the faculty after I finished in, in, at Methodist in Houston. Uh, I was over there in a little small town called Maytown, uh, which was nice. It was right, right next to the, to the beach, if you want to call it the beach. <laughs> um, you know, you uh, but uh, then I, after I finished, uh, after I finished that, I, um, um, I had, I had gotten um, um, married, and I had, I was expecting my third child, and so um, decided to move to Dallas. My parents were here, so I needed some help. Um, but the only way that it was kind of difficult to find a, a job uh, here in Dallas is kind of. Different market than, than Houston. I had just graduated, so you know, I needed some more experience. So uh, the only thing that was available was a, a wound care uh, opportunity and also doing uh, emergency room. So I took the uh, wound care opportunity. I uh, did that for about three years. Uh, I really liked that. It was, it was great. Um, it was very surgical oriented and um, a lot of advances going on there with. Uh, and skin grafts and different things that we could that we could use hyperbaric oxygen. You know, I had to I had to learn how to do that, and how to put people in the you know, in those tubes in those uh, chambers for, for oxygen to heal people and, and heal their wounds. Um, and that was that was really good. Um, and then I kind of I wanted to buy a house, and so I was saving money. So on the weekends I would work, and I would uh, I would work ER. And so that kind of uh, took over, and I started liking ER more than more than doing wound care. Um, and uh, then uh, that uh, that after three years, I decided I was like, okay, well, I think this is what I want to do. So I started doing ER. Uh, this was in 2012. So it's been eight years. I've been a, an emergency room doctor. Uh, it's been a very good experience. Uh, really like it, love uh, helping people in uh, difficult situations, and, uh, you know, adults, kids, I mean, it doesn't matter, uh, but it's uh, just a way to give back to the community and uh, um, just uh, be useful. Wonderful. Uh, tell me about your family, your wife and your kids. Okay, so I, uh, uh, I've, I've been through a couple of hardships. Uh, my, uh, I've, been, I've been divorced twice. Uh, my uh, first ex-wife, she kind of didn't like the U.S. and moved back. Uh, my uh, uh, second ex-wife, she uh, um, uh, we kind of parted ways. We have, I have four kids with, with her, so I have six children total. Uh, two that are living live in Bolivia and South America, and I have a daughter. She's 18, and I have a son. He's 16, uh, and then I have uh, four kiddos here. There. All this is about to be warm, it's about, so we're kind of uh, trying to see what, you know, trying to get him to brush up on his Hebrew and learn as much as he can before that. Um, and I just got married uh, back in October. Oh, and, uh, congratulations. Thank you. I uh, met this wonderful, uh, uh, wonderful lady from, a uh, uh, girl from, uh, uh, she's from Longview, Texas, from East Texas, and uh, we, uh, um, uh, we're actually having a Jewish ceremony uh, coming up uh, this month on the mm -hmm. 21st. Um, but we already got married uh, back in, in October. So uh, uh, we've been together about you know, six months or so. Mm -hmm. um, things were wonderful. She's got two kids, so I have two more kids. <laughs> <laughs> I have an a, a eight-year-old daughter now and a, four -year, a five-year-old. He's just turned five. Uh, Must be a happy half the cow. So yeah, so we uh, we have uh, our our, uh, uh, our schedules are kind of um, uh, uh, mixed because um, we have all the kids pretty much uh, about two three days uh, every other week and they're all together and so it's a uh, it's very uh, never a dull moment. <laughs> so uh, it's very uh, it's, it's it's a lot of fun. <laughs> so we try to keep. Uh, Keep uh, all the Jewish traditions, and um, uh, with me, my wife is uh, uh, currently in the process of uh, converting, mm -hmm. and um, uh, 
so that's that's a uh, it's 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 a wonderful time uh, right now. That's great. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, I think um, uh, it's it's very uh, it's it's very uh, interesting to see uh, the developments that. Uh, Jewish communities have in, in different places, and um, uh, uh, it, it was it was very interesting to to come from a different country and, and to uh, but see pretty much the same traditions or the same values uh, you know, that are are tried to be uh, passed on from generation to generation. So um, I think I was fortunate uh, to be in a, uh, in a such a great Jewish community as I was in Bolivia, uh, they placed a lot of, uh, of uh, uh, importance to family in, in, uh, in, in Israel and uh, kind of giving back to the community and, and uh, it's, uh, it's, 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 it was just a great experience for me and you know, I feel proud to be Jewish. And, uh, it's, uh, I think your heritage uh, uh, tells you who you are and, and uh, what, what you need to do. So, thank you for the opportunity. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate <laughs> <My story>. it. <laughs>